Hi there, in this video we're going to go through um, the Pythagorean identities and how we use them in order to solve trigonometric equations. Okay, so let's go through the Pythagorean identities. So the first one being, so Pythagorean identities. So let's take a red pen, underline that. Okay, so the first one being cos squared a plus sine squared a equals one. So number one, cos squared a plus sine squared a is equal to one. So that is true for uh, all angles a, okay? Uh, number two, the second Pythagorean identity, that is one plus tan squared a. So I can hope I hope you guys can see that one plus tan squared a, that is equal to sec squared a. And number three, one plus cot squared a equals cosec squared a. Okay, so these are the three Pythagorean identities. So let's take this red, pe uh, this green pen, make it stand out. Okay. So these are the three Pythagorean identities. I'm not going to go through the proof. Okay. So um, so I'm not going to go through the proof. Um, if you're curious as to where they come from. Um, there's plenty of uh, good books out there and uh, good sites, uh, websites out there too that will discuss where they, um, how they arise. <coughs> so, however, um, in this video, I'm going to show you um, how to use the Pythagorean identities in order to solve um, trigonometric equations. Okay. So, generally speaking, okay, my my tip is. Um, whenever you have uh, a squared term, so a square of a, of a trigonometric ratio um, appearing in an ident in an equation, so if you have a square of a trigonometric ratio appearing in an equation, okay, uh, nine times out of ten, um, you may need to use the Pythagorean identities. Okay, so let me just write down this tip. So. Here's a tip for you. So this 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 works for the most part. So here's a tip. Okay. So I hope you can see that. So tip. So um, um, use Pythagorean identities. So use Pythagorean identities if equation has now I'm going to leave I leave that this uh, this blank so between the brackets that means it could be any trigonometric ratio whether it's sine cos or tan or cosec sec or cot so that ratio would appear there so but however if you see a squared Okay, so this usually works. So nine times out of ten, if you see a squared, okay, that means use the Pythagorean identity. So use one of these identities in order to help you solve the equation in question. So use Pythagorean identities if an equation has a ratio to the power two. So the operative um, point in this tip is whenever you see a ratio term to the power two. Um, most likely you'll be using the Pythagorean identities to help you in solving the equation in question. Okay, so that's a that's a tip for you guys. So let's take it forward. Let me show you how it works. Let me show you how we apply these identities with example one. Okay, so example one is to solve the following equations. So we're going to solve the following trigonometric equations and the range given is the x angles 
lie between 0 and 360 inclusive. And we're going to solve this equation in part A. So to start off with part A, we're going to solve 4 minus 5 cos x equals 2 sine squared x. Okay, so 4 minus 5 cos x equals 2 sine squared x. Okay, so let me show you how this tip works. So remember, if you see a power 2 appearing in your trigonometric equation, 9 times out of 10, so it might not always work, but 9 times out of 10, that should give you an indication that you may need to use a Pythagorean identity to help you solve this equation. So I see a power 2. Let me circulate that in red. Yeah. So we need to use one of these identities okay, in order to solve this equation in question. Yeah. Now, the general idea is we look at the highest power, okay, and the term with the highest power is sine. So we need to change that term. So we need to change the term with the highest power, which is a sine or a sine squared in total, into the least power term. So the least power term is cos. So in this case, what I'm trying to say is we need to change the sine squared to a cos squared term with, uh, by using one of these three identities in order to make all of our terms in terms of one ratio, which is cos, okay, in this case. So the identity for us is the first one. So we're going to be using the first Pythagorean identity, cos squared plus sine squared equals one, yeah? So let's continue. So I'm going to call that step number one. So step number one for me is to carefully select your identity that you're going to use. So we're going to use in this case cos squared plus sine squared a equals 1. So remember the idea, we're going to change the sine squared term to the least powered term. So we're going to change the sine squared to a cos squared. Now, if we use this identity, so instead of a's, let's use x's. So in this case, cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. Now, if I rearrange, sine squared x is 1 minus cos squared x. Okay, so this is my side calculation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the sine squared by 1 minus cos squared x okay in our equation here okay so that's step number one rearranging your identity to get your sine squared term now if I substitute into our equation let's call that step two we're gonna have 4 minus 5 cos x on the left that's equal to 2 open bracket and sine squared is replaced by 1 minus cos squared x so a simple replacement of sine squared with this term now let's open up the brackets so 4 minus 5 cos x equals 2 minus 2 cos squared x and if I move my terms to one side so I'm going to move both of these terms to the left so we're going to have 2 cos squared x minus this 5x, uh, 5 cos x rather, we'll keep that there, and 4 minus the 2 is 2, that is equal to 0, okay? So in this case, I've got a quadratic equation here, okay, involving cos. Now, in order to solve this quadratic, okay, I want to make it look like um, a general quadratic. So what I normally do is I let cos x equal a letter. Okay, so the letter I tend to use is T. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let T equal cos x in order to make this equation resemble a quadratic. So by doing that, I'll get 2T squared minus 5T plus 2 is equal to 0. 
Okay, so this is the quadratic that we need to solve. Okay, so the idea is we're going to work out the t values for this quadratic first, and then we'll go back to this substitution and work out and solve for the x angles later. Okay, so in this case, let's have a look. Now, I can factorize this quadratic, and if I were to factorize, my two factors are 2t minus 1 and t minus 2. So these are my two factors that equate to 0. Okay, and I've got two values. So either 2t minus 1 is equal to 0, which, in, which means that the first value of t is half. So that is the first value of t that we have, okay? And if I were to continue here, so I know that's not really ideal, but the second value, or t minus two, so that is that term there, yeah? Or t minus two is equal to zero, which means that the second value of t is two. So I've got two values, t equals half, t equals two, yeah? So that is our step number two. Obtaining our quadratic, I used t, so you can use any letter you like, replace the cos x terms in this case, in this equation, by your letter. So I use t to get my quadratic. I factorised in this case to work out the two values of t. Now, in the next step, I'm going to use these two values and I'm going to substitute them into this equation, t equals cos. Yeah. So we'll call that step three. So over the page. So I hope you you can look at this. So let's call this step number three. So I hope you can see this. So when t equals, so if we go back, the first value of t that we see is half. So when t equals half, okay. So if I put that into this equation, t equals cos, let's see what we have. So when t equals half, when I substitute in, that means cos x equals half. Okay, so we're gonna solve that equation. Okay, so let's solve that right now. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how to solve uh, a basic trigonometric equation. So I'm gonna use the same ideas and the same steps and we're going to solve this together using a cast diagram, okay? So we did that with um, a couple of examples in one of the last videos. But also bear in mind our range. Our range is our angles x should be between 360 and 0, okay? So on the right-hand side, cos x is plus half. So I'm going to note that cos is positive. So remember, in one of the steps, you calculate the principal value, that is the inverse cos of half, which should be 60 degrees. So that's your principal value, that's the standard result. Cos 60 gives you half, okay? Now remember, in the next step, so again, this is in a previous video, but in the next step, we drew a cast diagram, okay? So let me take a ruler divide it into four quadrants, label them A, S, T, C. And remember, cos is plus, it's positive, so we've got a plus half, which means that we need to plot 60 where cos is positive. So remember, cos is positive in the all quadrant, quadrant number one, and in quadrant number four, the quadrant label C, the cos quadrant, yeah? Also remember, we measure angles from, so when plotted the angles, we measure them from the horizontal, okay? So 60 degrees in quadrant one, just a rough idea, is this angle measured in quadrant number one. And when it comes to quadrant number four, again from the horizontal measure 60 degrees. So let me take a ruler, Here's the angle 60 in quadrant number four, okay? Now, remember our range, so let's have a picture of this in our mind. So 
the range is 0 to 360 included. So bearing that in mind, using this cast diagram, therefore the solutions are so the first solution I'll call x1 the first solution using our cast diagram remember from the last video we measure it from the initial line so start here until you reach the first line okay and that angle is 60 degrees in this case as for the second solution I'll name that x2 remember start from the initial line right round until you hit that second line yep so all of this angle so it's one revolution 360 minus 60 so 360 minus 60 that is 300 degrees yeah so bearing in mind that our range is up to 360 included um, we don't need to calculate or we don't calculate another solution because another solution surpasses the range of 360 yeah so just to be curious another solution will be one revolution 360 plus 60 so 360 plus 60 yeah but we don't need to calculate that as a solution because we need all of the angles up to and including 360 yeah now that is what happens when t equals half we have a second value of t so going backwards t equals 2 from the previous page so let's continue so I hope you, I hope you can see this so when t equals 2 when I replace that in our substitution t equals cos x we're going to have cos x equals 2 okay now looking at this equation this equation cannot be solved purely because cos x lies between 1 and minus 1 okay so the range of cos lies between 1 and minus 1 so this equation cannot be solved okay so I'm just going to put an, a cross beside that so that equation cannot be solved so hence in this case we've got only two solutions okay so those are the steps to solve um, an equation so the operative things is mainly so often enough this would work so whenever you have a power 2 9 times out of 10 you'll be using a Pythagorean identity okay